when uh, this third test came out negative, ah, I jumped. And when I looked at him, I was like, my son, you are free from the virus now. You are okay. I was very happy. And uh, up to now, when I look at him, I'm always very happy. Yeah. My name is Patricia Gabesi. I have a boy that's a fool. He's five. I don't want my fellow women to go through the pain that I did. I just want to help them. June 2008, I gave birth to twins. Being a boy and a girl, I was like, wow, thank you. I have a boy, I have a girl, that's, that's all. But by then I didn't know my HIV status. The first twin died on 12th, that was in, on Saturday, and the second twin died on 13th, that was on Sunday. If I had that courage to know my HIV status first before I got pregnant, the chances for me to transmit the virus could have not been there. And yeah, I felt sorry for my babies that I was very selfish. The expert mothers are indeed experts. They understand what it means to be HIV positive. They have gone through the process of maybe denial. They know how painful it is to have the virus. The good thing is that they have passed through those challenges so they can now uh, encourage other people who are going through the same things. When I first tested HIV positive at antenatal, I did not understand the danger. I was 18, very young. I did not tell my husband because he refused to go for testing and I was afraid he will divorce me. So I ran away from treatment. My eldest daughter is HIV positive. Another of my children died. We do share experiences. I've gone through this, 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 and I overcome it in this way. So during our interactions, that's where they got that trust. I was pregnant when Patricia persuaded me to go on to treatment. If I hadn't met her, then my other children could also have been infected. In terms of dropping out, young women and teenage mothers were particularly at risk. Women that came to book very late in their third trimester were also at risk. Mostly, the women lacked partner support. So for the sake of preserving their marriages, these women stopped accessing treatment. For some of them, their drugs were thrown away in the toilet. For the others, their spouses said, you don't need to go to the facility to get the medication or else you'll be divorced. When my wife got tested, I was very disappointed. Our marriage nearly broke up, but I took advice from Patricia. The trouble in Malawi is that men think they are superior. If a wife tests HIV positive, then it is the wife's fault. To change this, we need men to talk to men.
peer support by the mentor mothers and the expert mothers makes the women continue treatment uh, compared if you don't have the peer support. That we're able to find it in a randomized clinical trial, it is actually hard evidence that we should be able to highlight that it is key and that we can invest into. What we need to do is actually provide the structure and supportive supervision to motivate mental mothers to do their work. What I remember about my work, when we took their DBS, if the baby become negative, we are very happy indeed. I remember one mental mother saying that this thing works, this thing being PMTCT, it works, and therefore I cannot sit by for any more babies to continue to have HIV. When they see HIV negative children coming out, that was also a satisfaction for them. They knew that they are working and it was giving them the drive to carry on, to push on. When I asked him that, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I want to be a medical doctor. So I said, God, may his wish be granted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>